or not really, because he gets to be in Cleveland yeah. live with Shakes. us this morning. Peter Schrager working hard on that mock draft 3.0. We'll be breaking it down and giving you some, you know, some crap about it, to be honest here and frank um, among family members. But also, how exciting is it to be in Cleveland? It's amazing, Kay, and you can feel it in the city. That's fine, but why this draft is so cool is that we are here this morning and there are still questions about the top five, legit mm -hmm. questions. San Francisco, Atlanta, Cincinnati. Kyle said the draft is 12 hours away. I would tell you, I usually got a good, pretty good feel for what's gonna happen the first hour. This year, no one knows. I'm here on the ground. I cannot wait to get started. LFG, let's start the show. Ah, Peter, working blue. Ooh, okay. We're doing it. You never know who will pop by and hang out with Peter Schrager. We are here. We'd like to welcome everyone joining us. Maybe seeing us for the first time on ESPN2. Yeah. Welcome. We'll be simulcasting on NFL Network and ESPN2. A lot of synergy between the two over the next three hours. So thank you for having us. This is Good Morning Football presented to you by Jeep. And let's welcome in now in a lead block, Tom Pelissero. Lead block. Let's do it. Tom P joining us this morning. Draft day finally here. What does the future hold for Jimmy Garoppolo in San Francisco? Just an easy casual, just a, a softball for you this morning. Okay, even barring any doomsday scenarios, it is fair to say that Jimmy Garoppolo's future with the 49ers very much up in the air as San Francisco prepares to draft his replacement at number three overall tonight. My understanding is you can anticipate multiple teams to be checking in with the 49ers today about a potential trade for Garoppolo. One logical team that has been connected to this for a while now, of course, Garoppolo's original team, the New England Patriots. But the wheels are not in motion on anything just yet. And you have one big complicating factor here. Garoppolo has a no trade clause in his contract that just kicked in last month. So in essence, Garoppolo could scuttle any deal by not agreeing to a restructured contract on the one that is currently due to pay him $25.5 million in 2021. Okay? Cannot wait to see what happens to him, whether it happens on the first round of the draft tonight or until Sunday when we don't know if any one of us is going to be alive. Dun, dun, dun. Thank you so much, Tom Pelissero. That courtesy of Kyle Shanahan. Of course, we are here with all of the headlines, the drama, the gossip, the mock drafts, some incredible guests on the show. Kyle, too. Chris Collinsworth will be here. Absolutely. Thomas Dimitrov, one of our old friends, coming by to break down this thing for us. All kinds of stuff. And Justin Jefferson. Hey-oh! Might put the Fortnite remote down and come hang with us on the program. The best in the business. Okay, guys, let's do this. Yep. Right off the top, four-hour show right here on NFL Network and ESPN2. Fill in the blank. The biggest name or the biggest storyline tonight, Kyle, is what? Yeah, I'm going to go with the to interpret that as most talked about thing, and I'm going to go right back to it. Justin Fields, what is going on with this dude? We've talked about it for weeks. There's something missing. There's a stink on him, and I threw down the gauntlet yesterday on this program. Bring it up right now. Find something wrong with Justin Fields, presented by Jeep. The size is there, the experience, the accuracy is a single season record at Ohio State, arm strength, leadership, toughness across the board, and yet I can't find anyone who wants to fall in love with him. And I threw this down yesterday. I said, tell me, wh what is it? Yeah. The best theories and suggestions that I got were uh, having to do with epilepsy, which is nonsense because he had it last year when he was the number one player in the country, in my opinion. Uh, they have, well, he's an Ohio State quarterback. You can't trust him. Well, then you can't trust Zach Wilson either because BYU quarterbacks don't pan out and you certainly don't want to draft one from Texas Tech, Patrick Mahomes. That's nonsense too. Um, the only people, the responses that I got were the ones that were like, yeah, there's nothing wrong with him. Shut up, Brant. We want him to fall to us at 15 and at 20. And maybe that's like the that. case. I think Justin Fields is getting Citizen Kane. Do you know what that means? Yeah. Do you see what happened with Citizen Kane this yeah. week? It's enjoyed an 80-year run as 100% fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. It's, it's the king. They find some review from 1941 from someone saying, eh, it's not that great. Nick, kick it down to 99%. What? And now it's looking up at Paddington 2, which has 100%. Citizen Kane is Fields. Paddington 2 to me is Mac Jones. It won't do. I still haven't heard anything right, and I'm still not sure he won't fall tonight. I'm very afraid. Someone take him. He's the Citizen Kane of quarterbacks. Paddington 2. Paddington 2 looking down on Orson Welles. How about that? Two. Welcome to our show. I'm not going to talk receivers, but speaking of Paddington 2, just bear with me. Nice, Nate. Word I want to talk about Najee Harris. The running back, okay. this is what it's all about. In the NFL nowadays, even though we say it's a passing league, even though we say the world revolves around quarterbacks, if you have a few backs on your offense that can help you win games, they can ride you to the playoffs and then hopefully a Super Bowl. But if you have one running back that can do it all, 
you don't need to spend money elsewhere. And I feel like whoever lands this young man, he's going to make an immediate impact. I talked to him a few weeks ago. We had a sit down, more of a lay down. Yeah. He was in the bed, I was in the bed, it was more like stepbrothers. And I realized that this dude has the most confidence in the world and he understands what people are saying about him. And then we had him on the show, he said, Listen, Kyle Brandt, I get it. I get what they're saying about running backs. I understand that they're trying to devalue the position, but I can do it all. Over the last couple of years, 50 touchdowns? Crazy. 11 of those were receiving touchdowns? So forget about the fact when we say he can't catch the ball. 11. He's, he's already dispelled that. He said, I'm that. not a power back. He's not a power back. Yeah, he actually he doesn't want to be called that. I he love that. He doesn't want to be called that. I remember when I stood next to him, when I met him for the first time, gave him the bro hug, and of course he was jacked. And then he gave me the one up, one down. He was mm-hmm. like, you're small. Listen, I'm a legit 6'1 and some change. You're not small. 200 pounds. Mm. But he is a big yeah. dude, a big back that can do it all. And I'm looking at the Arizona Cardinals okay. at 16. I'm looking at the Miami Dolphins at 18. Okay. Then at 24, I'm looking at the Pittsburgh Steelers. Those three teams, they could snag him. I don't see him falling and slipping until late in the first round. If he does... Teams will be foolish to pass on. You've seen all the tape, though, for months, and you watched him on Saturdays in college. So what is it about meeting him? I think Kyle will agree with me here. He has won you over in some weird way after being with him and spending time with him in person. What is it about? This is just the guy he all of a sudden is talking about a ton. Why? He has a sweet blend of a guy that is so hungry to not just prove to the world that he's a good back, but to himself, but also he is having a good time doing it. Yeah. I want somebody that can strap up the pads, kick your Mm. while having a smile on his face, mm-hmm. and that's not yours. You can help a young quarterback like Kyla Murray or Tua Tungavailoa, like you're saying. Uh, we'll see if a running back goes in the first round or if they slip to the second round. It all happens tonight on NFL Network, ESPN, and ABC. Schrager, storyline or question mark? What are you looking at tonight? I'm looking at the San Francisco 49ers, Kay, and I'm looking at Kyle Shanahan, the head coach. This is his pick, and I've been told from people within the organization that What Kyle is comfortable with is who we will be comfortable with. Kyle Shanahan has been known as a quarterback guru for years. And yet, in the past few years, it feels like the quarterback position has been what's holding the San Francisco 49ers back from true glory. Last year, they went through Garoppolo, was injured. They had Nick Mullins. They had Josh Rosen on the roster. They went ahead and traded not only from 12 to 3, but gave up next year's first round pick and the year after that's first round pick for a quarterback that as of this morning, and it's not just me, it is the insiders on our network, it is the insiders on ESPN, on ESPN2. No one knows who the San Francisco 49ers are taking, and the plan is that no one will know until that card is in. I have been leaning Mac Jones every single day since that trade was made, and then the last few weeks on this show have come out and said, I believe Trey Lance might have a shot here. As we sit here this morning, Kay, I can tell you that in that building, they have a feeling of who it is, I can't with 100% confidence tell you whether it's Jones or Lance. And that is the beauty of the NFL draft. Kyle Shanahan, he might be a mad genius, but the fact that in this billion dollar industry of news and information, we don't know the morning of the draft makes it all the more intriguing. Kyle Shanahan, the pick is yours. Is the pick in? I don't know. It's a great question. We'll look at your mock draft 3.0 as well. And then, of course, there's the Patriots who, you know, you have Robert Kraft saying we want a different approach this year. I'm not satisfied with the drafts of the past. Guys, just two pro bowlers in the last eight drafts. One was a punter named Jake Bailey. So will they move up to secure their quarterback of the future? Will they pull a trade with a team like San Francisco and reunite Jimmy Garoppolo with the New England Patriots? There is so much to discuss. We'll be doing it all day long. And I do believe we'll have some bold predictions by the end of the show from the four of us. Big show today right here on NFL Network and simulcasting on ESPN2 as we welcome in Omar Ruiz. Mm. He is down in Florida, I believe in Davie, Florida this morning. Omar, welcome to the show. Happy <laughs> draft day to you. Uh, I think the Bengals are super intriguing. Not discussed a lot, but do they grab at five an offensive weapon for Joe Burrow or do they make the responsible decision and draft an offensive tackle to protect him? <laughs> this is the same case for the Dolphins with Tua a little bit. They pick at six overall. What's the priority for Miami? Well, good morning, Kay. I think the priority is to upgrade the roster with Tua Tungavailoa, and I believe that they are very confident they can do that in a couple of different ways. I don't think that they trade out of the number three spot if they didn't feel that way. Now, we've heard so much this offseason up in the AFC East, in New England specifically, about Jonu Smith and Hunter Henry, that double tight end set, perhaps replicating the Rob Gronkowski and Aaron Hernandez days. 
Well, here in Miami, they could go the same way with Mike Gusecki and Kyle Pitts if he's there. And remember, the tight ends coach of those Patriots teams is now the co-offensive coordinator here for the Dolphins in George Godsey. So Kyle Pitts could make a lot of sense. And then there's Jamar Chase, who many people believe is the top receiver in this draft. I asked one Dolphin source about Jamar Chase's workouts this spring, considering he didn't play in 2020. The response I got that he looked unbelievable. So a couple different ways they can improve there. Of course, there's the Alabama receivers that they're intrigued by. Chris Greer saying that smaller players have thrived in the NFL of late, so they've done their due diligence there. And then, of course, earlier this week, they traded Eric Flowers, so that created an opening on the offensive line. So the overall priority is improving this roster, improving the offense around Tua Tungavailoa, and they believe they'll do that tonight, Kay. Appreciate that, Omar. You tell me, should I be nice to Peter Schrager or really rip into him? I have in my hands the mock draft that will be available, his final one ahead of the draft over at NFL.com momentarily. Should I be nice to him or mean to him after the break? <laughs> rip, rip him into it. Okay, uh, you know, Peter, <laughs> yeah. you know, what's interesting is we're going to be done with these mock drafts after this, but now we're going to get into draft grade season and we're going to be hearing right. about